Thanks so much for tuning into my channel. Today's video is a Monday memo, so I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that today's Monday memo was simple encouragement to do two things. And the first thing was keep it simple. You might be like, well, well, you know, it's not that simple. What do you mean? What do you mean keep it simple? My life is not simple. My life is complicated. I have all these um, things that I'm responsible for, all these people, all these ideas, this job, all these responsibilities. How can I keep it simple? What do you mean? Right, so here are some of the things that I suggest we all do to keep it simple. The first thing is going to be write things down. Write things down. Sit down. Write out all of the things that are in your mind. Um, for one, it just helps to get things out and to see a broad spectrum, to see the whole of what it is you're actually dealing with that you need to do. So writing things down, it helps. Um, and more specifically for me, um, writing things down is coming more into play in my life because I am dealing with um, academics. <laughs> I'm dealing with um, family and friends and I'm also dealing with um, the creative side of me and it all kind of meshes together and so I don't want to miss anything and in doing that I end up not accomplishing as much as I probably could have but when I write things down you know it helps me to not lose ideas you know if I'm in a rehearsal and I have an idea of something that I need to do for school I can simply jot it down and go back and look at it later or I, I get ideas for music I get ideas for vlogs uh, you know I just get ideas all the time and I'm just one of those people that just is always thinking and that can be a good thing and a bad thing but that's a whole another conversation so um, I've, I've started to just make sure I always have something with me so that I can record a lot of people jot things in their phone um, which is cool that doesn't work for me as well I do jot things in my phone but sometimes that doesn't work for me as well because everything else <laughs> in my life in a lot of cases is you know at the tip of my fingertips on my phone so sometimes it helps me to come away from my phone with paper and pencil just write out all that's swirling around in my brain that I want to do um, in a certain time span write it down and then I can look at it and kind of pull back and do number two the second thing that we can all do to keep it simple is to schedule things schedule things you know it's easy to say okay next week I'm gonna write two papers I'm going to have 10 client sessions and I'm going to record two YouTube videos when it's just in my head it just sounds so very tangible and in a lot of cases it is but once the day begins you know it's interrupted in so many different ways by so many different things and um, I end up being up like super duper late because I'm kind of a night out anyway and so you know if someone calls or something happens early on in the day that pulls me away from the things that I plan to do a lot of times either I end up doing the things that I plan to do late 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 in the midnight hour and then the next day I'm tired which takes away from the energy that I need to be creative, to be available um, to clients, to um, write a paper. And so, which makes it a domino, you know, effect. And then I'm up late again because it's taken me all day to conjure up the energy that I needed. Scheduling things just works for me. That way, if someone calls and, well, can you help me with this? Um, and I have a workout scheduled for 9 o'clock. Sure, unless it's an absolute emergency, I can say, sure, I can help you with that. Here are the times that I'm available to do that. As opposed to, well, I was going to work out today, but I didn't really say what time. So I can come and do whatever you so-and-so, you know, asked me to do. Um, scheduling things just works because that way I am more aware of the time that I need to accomplish my task. And I'm also more aware of the time that I have to invest into helping um, in doing things. To help other people it just works um, scheduling things holds you accountable to um, doing what you say you're gonna do 
Um, and at the end of the day, being able to look back and say, okay, I followed my schedule. I stuck with my schedule. Another thing about scheduling things is it's just it helps to build good habits. Um, if you're someone who doesn't work out regularly, but you know that you should and you actually enjoy it, you want to do it more, the only way it's going to become a part of daily life is if it becomes a habit. Um, you have to know you and what's going to get you into good habits. Um, what, what things are more likely to move you into a place where you're building good habits that work so that you're able to accomplish the things that you need to accomplish in your life. Your prayer in your Bible study time or your meditation time, um, schedule those things so that nothing gets in the way of them. Um, you may find that one schedule works for you and one schedule does not. Just make a schedule. Um, you'll work out the kinks eventually, but if you're really serious about wanting to make real change or wanting to really accomplish things, you will schedule them. And I know some people don't like to schedule things because they don't want to commit. Like, it's a commitment thing. We have issues in our culture with commitment, so we don't like to schedule times to do things, you know, for ourselves or even for other people. But um, learning how to commit to what is important to you is going to build character um, and it's going to make you a stronger person for the race that you're running, for the journey that you're on. So number two, schedule things. All right, number three, take things one step at a time. I've had multiple conversations with different friends who are interested in um, vlogging or maybe they're interested in doing some type of health regimen and a lot of times a conversation consists of reasons why it hadn't been done yet. All legitimate reasons but a lot of times it's because we're trying to um, accomplish what we see other people have done not like thinking that these people have been building on this for like the past five six seven eight years and you just got the idea last year well stuff takes time there are steps and as you take each step you learn and you grow and you become more committed or you find out is this something that i really want to invest time in um so yeah take stuff one step at a time if you um and i, I know i'm mentioning fitness a lot because that's something that, by the grace of God, I have been successful at um, for the past couple of months. I've been on a really good, um, a really, I've been gaining momentum with my health and fitness over the past couple of months. So I'm kind of harping on that because that's, you know, that's real to me in this moment. One of the things that helped me like a whole lot was um, using my Fitbit. My sister bought me a Fitbit for Christmas for Christmas of 2015 and I got it a little bit before Christmas didn't use it much thought I'd lost it one week and then when I realized I hadn't lost it and it was found it was like gold to me and I started thinking about the fact that I've had this tool for a couple of months and I wasn't doing much with it the whole 10,000 steps situation I wanted to do something that I knew I could accomplish that would challenge me that was just incremental steps to getting back into um, having good fitness. So I took a calendar, a desk, um, a large desk calendar, and I sat down and I wrote out day one to day 40. And I said, for the next 40 days, however many weeks that is, I'm going to get my 10,000 steps six days a week. And on Sundays, I will rest. And if I just feel like taking a little walk on a Sunday, I will do so. Making that small commitment was a step for me. Within six weeks time, um, I had done my 10,000 steps for six days a week, for six weeks straight, and I never missed a day. Even if that meant it had gotten late and I had to walk around or jump up and down or do Zumba or play music and dance in my I committed to getting those 10,000 steps every day. Well, that was an incremental step for me to get my fitness in order. So I went from that to doing some jogging and doing some running and then I was able to get back into the weight training. So I didn't just wake up one day and say I'm getting back in the gym and you know start 
running six miles and lifting all these weights and doing all this stuff. It was incremental. I started with just walking enough to get my 10,000 steps a day and that helped to set me on the path that I wanted to go on. So that's just an example of how taking things one step at a time. If you want to do a vlog and you have an iPhone, start one. You don't have to have 10,000 backgrounds and the most elaborate camera there is. Although, you know, I know it's, it's nice to start out with a bang. But if you've been saying you're going to start out with a bang for the past two years and your excuse is that you don't have all of the latest equipment, what are the chances that you'll actually start anytime soon? Take a step, get started. So, number four, the fourth thing you can do to keep it simple is don't overcommit. Going back to your writing of your list and your coming up with a schedule, don't overcommit. Don't put 20 things on your schedule to do when you haven't been following the schedule and you're just trying to get disciplined. Pick a couple things that you know for sure, I can do this and build from there. Do those couple of things on the schedule consistently for 30 days and then start adding where you feel like, well, I'm wasting time here. I could be doing this. I could be doing that. Don't overcommit because when you overcommit and you're not able to do everything that you wrote down, you feel defeated and then you quit. You feel like, well, this scheduling thing doesn't work anyway. I'm going back to what I was doing, which wasn't working either. But that's kind of how we roll um, a lot of times. I would speak for me. That's what, if I overcommit, I just, I feel bad about the fact that I didn't do all that I said I was going to do. Same thing with people, other people. Don't overcommit what you can do. Um, or the time that you have when it comes to other people because you end up disappointing someone and ultimately you're disappointed in yourself. So I know sometimes we all, plans change, things happen um, and there are some schedules and some commitments that we have that are more flexible than others. But overall, it's just nice to say, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably, a Wednesday may not be a good day to schedule extra things with people because you know, you have Bible study or you know you have to take your daughter to ballet it might not be the best day to commit to certain things and that's okay so just think about what you want to accomplish but don't overcommit. take your time um, map things out in a way in which you are likely to be successful because when you are successful your confidence is being built up yeah you're really getting to see what you can handle, what you can do. But then we'll move to number five, which is the last part of keeping it simple. Do challenge yourself. Do challenge yourself. If you want to get um, to where you exercise on a regular basis um, and you know you can walk 30 minutes, even though you will feel like really worked out, don't say, well, I'm only going to do 10. Push yourself. Do the 30 minutes if you can do the 30 minutes. Or at least set the goal for 30 minutes. And if you are out there and you're walking for about 20 minutes and you feel like, okay, I am better stop or someone's going to have to come and drag me out of this, off of this track, then, you know, it is what it is. But challenge yourself to do the 30 minutes. Or if you know you're not a morning person, but you want to get up and have that morning prayer time or that morning time of studying your Bible, you know, Challenge yourself. Maybe don't set uh, a goal of getting up at 4.30 a.m. If you know that you normally get up at 11. But maybe challenge yourself to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, don't overcommit, but do challenge yourself. Alright, so I'll go over those again. You know, ways to keep it simple. Write things down. Write all those brilliant ideas down. Schedule things so that you um, have a lot of the times so that it's actually so it's actually doable for you. Three, um, take things one step at a time. Follow that schedule. If you're on number one, focus on number one. Give number one all of your energy. Get it done. Do the very best you can, and then move on to number two. Take it a step at a time. All right. The fourth thing: don't overcommit. Your schedule or your time or your energy. Your thought process. Don't overcommit. But then five, do challenge yourself. If it's in your head, there's a very good chance 
that is something that you can do. So don't overcommit, but do challenge yourself. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have not yet, please make sure you subscribe on your way out. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Um, make sure you stay tuned because a little later on in the week, I will cover part two of our Monday memo, which was just ask. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.